see something cool? Yeah? In my right hand, I am holding a tiny little paper ketchup cup. This tiny little paper ketchup top, cup, what most people don't know is that less than 1% of these ketchup cups ever reach their full potential. And that is a made up statistic to get your attention. <laughs> In all seriousness, these little tiny paper ketchup cups, when you go to get them, how many do you have to fill up with ketchup? So like one or two? How many? This is a participation part of the program. Three, five, a tray full. What most people don't know is that there's little folds in this paper ketchup cup that if you pop it open can turn to three times its size. Where in your life do you have untapped potential that's hiding in plain sight? Maybe it's not hiding at all. Maybe you, you know your own potential. It's just you didn't do anything about it because you don't want to challenge the status quo, or maybe because you just want to, you know, be like everybody else, or because you, you know, you thought you were doing the right thing at that time and you didn't speak up, and now your car payment is more expensive than you thought it was going to be because you didn't try to pull at the folds that are right in front of you. Or maybe because you just didn't know what to say. You ever have one of those moments where you're like, I feel like I could have gotten what I wanted if I just knew what to say? You ever had those moments? We're going to flip that script today. There are three words to getting what you want. I teach these words to people around the world, and I'm going to share them with you today so you can start getting what you want. Those three words are decided, those L-Y words. You know the L-Y words? Typically, usually, normally, ordinarily, so the L-Y words. And the last one is the most powerful persuasive word, which is the word because. And we're going to explore these three words and help us remember them. I've created a little cheeky expression for us. It's decidedly because changes what was. Decidedly because changes what was. These three words, decided, the L-Y words, and because can change everything for us if we know when to listen for them and what to do once we hear them. Now, I want to share with you a couple of stories, and we're going to have an interactive exercises. We're going to do our own little studies here, and we're going to see how do these words show up in our lives, and how come we're missing them, these paper-folded cups in our lives, and we're not hearing them. What's happening to us, and what do we do in those moments? I'm the oldest of three children. I have two younger sisters. My husband is the oldest of three children. He has a younger brother and a younger sister. When my husband and I got married, we all thought, both of us and our families, that we would end up with three kids. That was our dream right out of the gate, right? So we come from the family of three, we're gonna have three. After we gave birth to Angus, we realized how wrong our dream was. It wasn't gonna happen. We struggled with infertility for seven years. And uh, I'm not alone. Uh, statistics show, according to the CDC, it's about 8 million women are struggling with fertility and carrying the baby. For me, I had three miscarriages. Uh, one of the miscarriages happened in a room similar to this on a stage, speaking in front of 1,482 people while on the stage. And I remember, uh, I guess we're not going to give birth to more kids. So I remember thinking that dream is, is over. And then I discovered something called an egg donor. I never heard of such a thing. And what it is, is it's, it's an anonymous egg donor, a woman, who donates her eggs, and we can get them and match them up with my husband's DNA, and then I carry the babies. Could this be? Could this work for us? Is this, is this the path that we're going to take? We weren't sure. So we, we were all excited. We got the money together. It's pretty expensive. You know, we had to borrow some money from my parents. And, and, and we go into the nurse and we see the fertility nurse and we say, okay, here's our plan. And had you been with us, you would have heard her say, the doctor decided, based on us using an egg donor, this would be the protocol. And she showed up with this Mac Daddy giant needle. Like, this looks like something you'd use in the Olympics, like to do a pole vault or something. It was like this, I mean, literally, I had already done in vitro with little teeny, like, diabetic-sized needles, but this monster, you got to be kidding me. And I saw it. You, have you ever had an experience where you did one of these facial expressions, you went like this. 
You know, you just hold your breath and your cheeks puff out. That's what happened here. And I looked at her and had you been with me, you would have heard me say, what's up with that? What's up with that needle right there? She goes, oh, you're going to need to take this twice a day for the month before getting pregnant and every day during your first trimester. I burst out crying. I knew immediately our dream once again was squished. We will not be carrying more kids. And the reason I knew that had nothing to do with the needle or the fact that I needed to take two of them at 160 days of my life, but I had to take them at exact times during the day. Now, let me back up. Uh, I'm retired from federal law enforcement. I worked for the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms for 17 years. My dad said I turned my hobbies into a career, (laughs) drinking, smoking, and shooting. Uh, I don't do any of those things uh, anymore. And... uh, I worked for ATF for 17 years. I I wrote, my specialty was firearms trafficking, analytic interviewing, and I later did, created courses on leadership. And I wrote a couple books. They did really well, translated into different languages. And I'm telling you this because this means as a consultant today, I go out and consult with companies on how to find the untapped potential hidden in the folds of their employees. How can you find that untapped potential that's right there in front of us? I fly over 100 trips a year. That's over 250 flights. All I could imagine is this like Mac Daddy needle, like I'm in line in England going through security and I'm like, oh, it's 235, let me pull my pants down and put a giant needle in my butt or in my thigh. I was devastated until I took a second and I rewound what she said to me. What she said to me was the doctor decided Decided does not mean executed on. Decided means there's another way. Decided is our first of our three words. Decidedly because changes what was. Decided is our first word. Decidedly because changes what was. She said, we decided. She just gave me a a little paper ketchup cup. Let's do an experiment. We're all going grocery shopping together, and we get 12 items at the grocery store, and we put them on the conveyor belt, but I decide to put one thing back, the very expensive facial lotion. It's just ridiculously overpriced. So we have 12 things. I decide to put one back. How many do we buy? Many of you will think in your heads, 11, and I hear some people shouting out 11, right? You're like, well, Janine, you said there were 12. You put one back, so 12 minus one is 11. I didn't say I put one back, though. I said I decided to put one back. When someone says the word decided, it does not mean it's executed on. I could say I decided to put it back and then change my mind and decided to buy it again last minute. Now, maybe you're like my husband and you're like, all right, this is ridiculous. You're like playing with semantics here on the words. If you decide to do something, Janine, it means you do it. If you decided not to buy it, then you wouldn't buy it. So let's do another experiment. Here we go. How many of you, I want you to raise your hands, how many of you have ever made a New Year's resolution to do anything? Like you made a New Year's resolution, you decided to quit smoking, you decided to lose weight, you decided to become a vegan, you decided to ask, this was the year you're asking for a raise, you decided to have more kids, you decided to get married, you decided to come out of the club, whatever it is. How many of you have ever made a New Year's resolution ever in your life? Raise your hand, keep your hands up. Now I want you to put your hand down if, You did not execute on that decision in the time you expected to execute on it. What happened? I thought you decided on doing it. Life happened. That's what happened, right? You decided to do it. It sounded good in the moment when everyone else was deciding stuff. And then life happened. Decided does not mean we've executed on it. There there was a study done at Scranton University, and what they discovered is that anyone who decides to do something on as a New Year's resolution, only 8% of us actually meet that that decision that we made. Only 8% of us. Let's go back to the grocery store. Where does this word decided live? What I found out is working with corporations across the globe is they would always ask me way beyond how do I find and untap into this hidden potential, they would ask me about motivations. They would say things like, well, how is my client or my patients or my, my employees, you know, how are they motivated to spend their time and energy with decision making? And decision-making kept being brought up a lot in motivation. So I did what anyone would do in this situation. I Googled to see if I could find out the answer. And I found a program at Columbia College in Chicago. 
And it was a decision-making program that linked body movement to how we make decisions. And I took this year-long certification program, and now I'm what's called a decision profiler. And what I learned is while we drastically make decisions differently, what we all have in common is we all go through the same three stages of decision-making. So let's go back to the grocery store. I'm going to show you these three stages of decision-making. All of us go through this. So the first stage is research. This is when you're in the grocery store, you're looking around, and you're trying to just get the lay of the land. So you're either investigating, you're looking at the labels, or you're exploring, and you're seeing what's down here versus what's down here. This air stage of decision-making is called research, that yellow box. In the orange box, this is where we do reasoning. This is, I'm going to take the wheat bread. No, I'm going to take the, I'm going to get the Italian bread. Oh, no, no, let's get the organic milk. Well, let's not get milk. Let's, let's get um, uh, almond milk instead. This is where you reason. This is where we stand our ground. This is where determining lives and evaluating lives here. What's important to me? What am I willing to take a stand for? What are my priorities? The why lives in this orange box of reasoning. The last step is the result, the, the blue box. This is where you buy the groceries and you literally are walking out of the grocery store. It is the result. The decision has been made. While the yellow box and the blue box are interesting, what we're going to be talking about today is that orange box, reasoning. All three of our words live in reasoning. They're roommates with one another. Decidedly because changes what was. I decided that I would never use drugs. If you're an HR person or, or you're a recruiter and you ask a potential employee, have you ever done drugs? And they say, I decided in high school I'd never do drugs. Please don't write down stated they never did drugs. Just because someone decided to do it doesn't mean he wasn't snorting cocaine in the car to get a little boost of energy for the, uh, for the big interview. What about if you ask your boss for a raise and your boss says, hey, listen, after we looked at our budget, you know, we decided ah, we're just not going to be able to give you a raise this year. You know what that is? That's a paper ketchup cup right there. Your boss just told you if you fight for it, you can get it. And, and the last thing you want to do is find out that everybody else that has your same position did fight for it and they got it and you didn't. Here's my rule of thumb. Before, whether it's decided or whether it's these L-Y words, we're going to go into a second. I say this. I believe that God created earth in how many days? Seven days, right? So God creates earth, right? And I think at the end of him creating earth, he does one of these. Not bad. Not bad. So for me, what I say is at the end of seven days for me, on that seventh day as it's ending, I say to myself, am I going to clap my hands and say, not bad? Or am I going to say, I wish I had opened up that opportunity. I wish I had pushed the boundaries just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Decidedly because changes what was. Let's look at the L-Y words now. Let's look at the L-Y words. Back at the grocery store, here we have two chunks of meat. Picture A and picture B. Picture A says 100% natural grass-fed and grass-finished organic meat. Picture B says typically 100% natural grass-fed and organic meat. Which meat do you buy if you buy meat? Right? How many people buy A? Let me see your hands. How many people would buy B? B would be weird, right? Would you see this in a store? Maybe you're like my friend, who, Paul, from Seattle, who said, dude, you got to give a different example. You would never see typically organic meat on a label. It's illegal. You need a different example. I go, Paul, that's my point, buddy. My point is, if you saw this in a grocery store, you would think this is ridiculous, Right? You'd be like, well, what do you mean? Is it, it's either organic or it's not. But yet when we hear things like this, how come we don't stop and say, wait a minute, that's ridiculous. Typically, we don't hire people from the outside. Normally, we don't negotiate salary to that extent. Um, usually, promotions don't happen until your 18th month into the role. So we hear all these L-Y words, and we're like, oh, OK. I can't apply for a promotion right now. Oh, OK. I can't ask for a raise or a parking spot. If you see, hear these L-Y words, that's a paper cup. All you need to do is pull at the boundaries a little bit to get what you want. I want you to imagine the word decided in these L-Y words, normally, usually, typically, basically. I want you to imagine them like this. Have you ever had a, a, a visitor, unexpected, come and tell your house? Though they're fun right? Your, your living room is a disaster. Your dorm room is a mess. And you have a surprise visitor that just shows up. 
and you take all the crap in your living room and you throw it in that closet in your front hall as fast as you possibly can, and the door begins to open and you shut your closet door, but it only 98% closes because there's a golf umbrella sticking out or a shirt or a sneaker. So it's 2% open right now in your dormitories or at your house. You have a closet. You have someone in your house that leaves it like this all the time. It's 98% closed, 2% open. There's always something sticking out. That's what these L-Y words and decided are. They're just little teeny folds like in the paper ketchup cup here. It's not going to be easy to open it up. You have a 2% chance of opening it up. But for me, my rule is at the end of seven days, am I going to clap my hands and say, I did a good job today? My next question I ask myself before I push that closet door open is, if I don't fight for what I want right now, is this going to affect someone else in my life? So if I'm asking for a raise, is that going to affect my husband? If I'm asking for more money for my employees or more benefits, is that going to affect my team? Is that going to affect morale? If it's going to affect someone other than me, then I'm more apt to try to pull at those boundaries and push that closet door open to get what I want. This is a guy named Brad Lee. Brad owns a company in Las Vegas. He does virtual training. It's called Lightspeed. He has a online video blog. And I asked him, can I play this clip from your blog to show the audience here at Tarding, Harding University? And he said yes. So I want to thank Brad for allowing me to play this. This is a real life negotiation. This is legit, guys. So you're going to see Brad, who's the owner slash salesperson, and you're going to hear from a woman who's a potential client and customer of Brad's. And she's going to say, hey, how does this work? Do I have to buy the system and then you give me ideas? Or can you give me ideas and then I buy the system? Tell me what you hear. So will we go over how we're going to set this up before I sign or no, you have to sign first and then go over it? To get a group of people in here to start work, usually you have to right. sign it. What did he say? That's that paper cup. I want you to imagine anytime you hear these L-Y words, wait a minute, that's weird. I want you to look at the person right next to you or behind you, and here's our experiment. I want you to say how many kids you have. If you don't have any kids, I want you to say you don't have any kids. But I want you to put an L-Y word in front of it. So I want you to, it's going to sound like this. I typically have three children. I normally have no children. So go ahead, say to the person next to you with an L-Y word. Does that not leave you confused? Hey, normally I'm the mother of three. What? Like your, your next thing is what? To ask a question. Are you a blended family? Are you divorced? Did you lose a child? Are you thinking of adopting? It creates that uncertainty. When you hear L-Y or decided, I want that alarm to go off as if someone is saying, normally I don't have children. I want that alarm to go off to say there's more to the story here. Decidedly because changes what was. Let's get to because. See, these first two words decided in the L-Y words are what I call wiggle words. They are the paper cup right here. Decided is the effort it takes to get the paper cup to open up. So this word because, I mean, not decided, de the word because is the, the little tool that opens up the ketchup cup. Because. Because is the most influential word in the English language. Here's how it works. When we use the word because, it ends up in this stage of reasoning. Because is the roommate to decided in the L-Y words. They're all best friends. They're besties. You have a because friend in your life. How many of you have a friend or someone in your life that can get you to do something you don't want to do? Right? You know who I'm talking about. You have someone in your life that can get you to do something you don't want. I see some of you pointing to the person next to you. Three nights ago was my 30th high school reunion. And I knew about this for six months. The invitation was online. My friend, Carrie Chasen, she's my because friend. She's like, dude, are you coming to the high school reunion? I'm like, no, no, I'm not coming. I didn't even like high school. It's not happening. So, right, she's relentless. She sees that closet door 98% closed, 2% open, and she's constantly relentless. She wants to open up that ketchup cup. Constantly. So guess what? Email, Facebook, private message. Two weeks ago, I get a handwritten card. I'm from Boston originally. I live in the DC area now. I, get, I don't even know how she got my home address. She sent me a handwritten card. And it's like, dear Janine, these are all the things I admire at you, admire about you. This is why I want you to come to the high school reunion because, and lists a bunch of stuff. She called me up, did you get my card? I'm like, yeah. She goes, you're coming? I go, no, still not coming. 
Guess what happened? Two days before the reunion, it's lighting up my phone like a Christmas tree, right? I'm getting text messages, private messages on Facebook, nonstop from Kerry Chasen. She goes, you know we only live once. Your mom died of breast cancer at 66, and you know, this is our 30th. You're not gonna be back until, you're, until we're 40th next. We only need you for, you know, just this one time. It's 10 more years, you know? Your mother loved party. Like, she's like guilting me, and you know what I did? I bought a $600 ticket when I could have bought it six months earlier for 200 bucks, and I went to my high school reunion, and I had a ball. Because of the carry chastens in our life, these are those people that push the door open. They see that opportunity, and they're relentless. You have kids like this. You have several kids. You know the kid. Hey, can we go get ice cream? No, it's freezing outside. You don't need ice cream. It's, it's March. It's ridiculous. Can we go get ice cream, Mom? No, it's absolutely insane. It's ice cold outside, snow on the ground. Then that one kid, you know which one comes to you? Can we go get ice cream? You're like, fine, let's go. Everybody thinks, all the other kids think that's the favorite. That's not the favorite. That's the irritating one. That's the irritating one that's going to ask nonstop until they get their way, until they open up that ketchup cup, right? You know what I'm talking about. That's the word decided. That's the word decided. Decidedly because all end up in reasoning. Decidedly because changes what was. I have what's called the because challenge. I have my clients, anytime you hear decided or the L-Y words, to use a because. And I got an email from one of my clients that said, Janine, here's what happened. They're an HR processing company, and the client had to choose their health insurance plans. So they called and said, hey, okay, um, for your insurance plan, um, what would you like? And he said, oh, we decided we're going to wait till next month to pick our plans. <gasps> she heard what? Decided. And then he said, because typically we don't even talk about it in-house for another month anyway. <gasps> she heard what? The L-Y word, typically. So guess what she did? The because challenge. She said, listen, Mike, because you had a fire this year and because this created uncertainty with your employees because you're in temporary office space, don't you think it might be a good idea to consider picking your plan sooner than later? Because when you do, it'll create certainty and your employees will know it's business as usual. You know what Mike said? What a great idea. I didn't even think of that. Seven-minute phone call. Seven-minute phone call. She used because to get what they want what she wanted. I teach this to law enforcement, to CIA operatives. I teach this across the globe. If you use these words, you can get what you want. This is my favorite ketchup cup story. Allow me to introduce you to my three sons and my husband. This is my husband, Leif, my oldest son, Angus, and our two little ones, our babies, Charlie and Jack. See, when the nurse said decided, the doctor decided I said to her, well, you know what? Because I travel on all these planes all the time, this isn't an option for me. Is there another option? She said, yeah, there's these hormone pills. And I said, well, how do they work? And she says, well, typically you have to be 35 years or younger, Janine, to be able to take the pills. And I said, wouldn't you agree I'm not a typical patient? She said, yes. And I go, because I'm not a typical patient and because I travel so much and because I have the money right now to pay for this other way, would you be willing to ask the doctor if he'd make an exception? And she said, I'll give it my best. And she walked out. And lo and behold, I got to open up my ketchup cup to three times the amount. So I have three sons now. My dream has come true. So let me ask you this. When we meet again, and I hope that we do, what will be your favorite ketchup cup story? My name's Janine. Thanks for playing with me. Thank you.